Hi everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we will talk about the dependency management and dependency management tools. Now, this is not going to be an exhaustive video on everything, but we will focus on the basics of dependency management and then we will cover Maven as the dependency management tool. So let's see the brief outline of this video. We will basically discuss a world without a dependency management tool. What happens if we don't use a dependency management tool like Maven or Gradle? Then we will touch upon what is dependency management, why is it important? And then in the end, we will cover Maven. We will see how to install the Maven, how to work with Maven, how to add and manage dependencies using Maven in a project. So let's start. Let's say you are working on a project. So you configured your project in IDE, Eclipse or IntelliJ. Then this project has some files and you are writing this project for consumer management. Now at some point of time, you need a new functionality. You need to send the emails to consumers. How do you send the emails to consumers? Well, you have to read about the email stuff. Then one possible way is that you develop everything on your own. So you develop code related to the email functionality, how to send an email, how to receive the email, how do we validate the email addresses and what happens if we don't, if we are not able to send the email, if email bounces, what happens then? If the email server is busy, how do we handle such scenarios? We will have to take care of all these things because we're doing everything on our own. That is, we are basically reinventing the wheel. We are doing the same thing that someone may have done already. Okay, so let's say someone comes and he says, you know, I have done this thing. I have developed the code for the email management and you can simply use my code so that you don't have to write everything from the scratch. So this is the code from someone related to the email functionality. Now the problem is, how do we use this code? If there is a way to import this code in our code base then we won't have to write everything from scratch we can simply use this functionality and the same thing can be done with other functionalities as well if there is a common functionality available then i can simply import that code in my code base in order to use that so that i don't have to write everything from scratch and i can simply focus on the problem statement or the business domain that i'm working on so if I'm working on consumer management, then I'll have to develop this specific functionality specific to my problem, specific to my project, not the cross cutting or common functionalities like sending the email, string validation, things like that. Now, let's say we found a way to import the code base, the external code that was owned and developed by someone else in our project. And we are able to use that. Now, after some time, let's say the person comes and he says, you know, there is a bug in the library that you imported and i have fixed that bug and released a new version so make sure that you use the updated code so he comes and says that this is the updated code of the same thing in which i have fixed the bug so now let's use this this basically this version of library in order to avoid that bug now you see the problem now the problem is how do I do this in a proper way? I should be able to import the new functionality in order to use that functionality in my project. But after that, how do I keep using updated versions of the same thing? How can I update the dependencies or such external code bases, such external utilities and libraries in a cleaner way? That is the problem number one. Second problem that you may face is how do you publish your code base? How do you publish your application? So the consumer management application that you are working on is currently in your IDE and you probably use the IDE to run the main file. That's fine for the development purposes. But what happens after that? How do you publish your code so that everyone else can use it? So how do we create an executable code that can be run anywhere? That is the problem number two. And that's where the dependency management comes into the picture. The external code or external library that you saw is called a dependency. We also call it library. 
when we want to use a new dependency or a new version of the existing dependency we ask the dependency management tool to find that version to find that library it's the job of that tool to find the library and return that library so that i can import it in my project and i can use it that is the job of dependency management tools there are many dependency management tools like maven gradle and does the same thing you have seen a world without the dependency management tool and how a dependency management tool solves these problems and now we will see things in a bit more detail so let's move on now that we understand what a world will look like without using a dependency management tool let's briefly talk about what is dependency management so developers often use pre-existing code written by other developers written by other teams to speed up the development and improve the quality of their work now as we saw in the previous diagram in the previous example we wanted to use the email functionality so basically we wanted to use a pre-existing code as a dependency now that pre-existing code is called the dependency or the library and managing these dependencies can be challenging especially if we consider the frequent updates to those libraries in form of new versions there could be bug fixes there could be new enhancements so how to keep track of such things and that's why dependency management is challenging dependency management is a basically way of tracking and organizing all the external code or the internal code that a project relies on a dependency management tool manages the dependencies and it also automates the build process so if you remember the problem number two in which i said how do we publish how do we deploy our application so that we don't have to run the application every time with the help of ide let's say running the main file that problem is solved by dependency management tool it automates the build process that means it will compile it will build the project and it will create an executable artifact let's say a jar file or a war file that can be shared to the world and that can be executed independently anywhere in the world so creating an artifact from the source code is called the build process now this artifact can be executable or non-executable that's a different thing so let's say i am simply working on a library that will manage the string validations then it doesn't have to be executable it will be simply used as an additional import in the project and the project will call the corresponding methods of the string validation library but if i'm working on my own project then i want to get an executable artifact let's say a jar file so that i can run that jar file from the command line and i can share that file with anyone so that things are handled by the build process and dependency management tool is an expert in that there are various dependency management tools in the market uh, maven gradle and but maven and gradle being the most popular dependency management tool now that we understand the dependency management let's briefly talk about why is it important as we already discussed it speeds up the development because we don't have to write everything on our own we don't have to reinvent the wheel so it saves the time and effort we are simply using the libraries which already exist in the market owned by different people tested by different people and finally the dependency management tool like maven or gradle help ensure that applications are secure and stable because when let's say a new issue is discovered in one of the dependencies that team will fix that dependency and will release a new version and with the help of maven or gradle we can quickly update to a new version and get the benefit of that fix which was done by the owner so let's move on and let's see how to work with maven here i'm creating a new project in intellij so if i go to the new project window you see there are generators maven arch type java fx kotlin multi-platform we need to create a maven project so i will go to maven arch type what maven arch type is you can consider it as a template so let's say if i have to simply create a plain java application then there is a maven template for that and that is called maven arch type so let's go to this and let's give it a name then this is asking for a arch type 
example let's select an arch type and let's create a new maven project so i'm going to select this one the first one and if i add i need to provide the group id group id tells who owns this project and we generally give the reverse domain name same as the package format that we follow in java so we generally give the reverse domain name in group id so i can say artifact id is the name of artifact that will be generated from this project once maven builds this project so it's the name of your let's say jar file version let's start with 1.0 this is to support multiple versions of the same project let's add create this window So here we see IntelliJ created a new project and in this project there is this single file pom.xml then this external libraries folder in which we see the external libraries for JDK 19. pom.xml is the file that Maven uses to read the metadata to understand about the project. Everything that has to do with Maven it will go into this file pom.xml. It represents the metadata for the project. All the dependencies that we want to use, we define them here. All right. So here we see the group ID, artifact ID, and the version. We can see that the values that we provided are overridden. So let's let's correct this. Artifact ID. And version is fine. Then we see the properties here we can create new property or we can override existing properties. So by default Maven configured or IntelliJ configured three properties. It says that the source and target compiler is JDK 19. That's why we see JDK 19 in the external libraries. Then we can also use new dependencies in the pom.xml that we will see next. Let's create a new source directory and in that directory we'll create a new Java file. As you can see, Maven has predefined source directories, src main java to hold the java classes, main resources to save the configuration files. Similarly for test, we have the source folder src test java and src test resources. So I'm going to add src main java. We see src main and java and I'm going to create a new class file in the java folder. Let's run the main method. And we see the output. The basic setup is working fine. Now let's try to add a new dependency to see the power of Maven. So let's say I want to do some string validations. I want to check, let's say, if the string is empty or not, if the string is blank or not, if it contains null or not. These are the things that I can do on my own, but I want to use an external dependency for the same to show you how to work with Maven and dependencies. Now there is an existing library from Apache Commons Lang3 that we can use. So if you want to find a dependency, you can simply search the dependency using keywords like the functionality that you are looking for Java and Maven. And most probably the first link that you'll see will be from the maven repository so if we go to this maven repository link here we see apache commons lang a brief description of that dependency then who owns this dependency and then we see different versions of this dependency this library we can use any of them so let's use the latest one this one and here we see this maven code So let's copy this code and let's add the dependency here. Now let's add the dependency in our project. 
To do that, I'm going to add the dependencies section. All the external libraries or dependencies that we want to use, they are defined in this section, dependencies. Next, we'll simply paste the code that we copied from the internet that says I want to use this dependency. And as you can see, each dependency has a group ID, which is basically to identify, to find the library who owns this library org.apache.commons then we have the artifact id the name of the artifact that we are going to use and then a version so it is same as we defined for our pom.xml so let's save the file and load the maven changes this will trigger a download as you can see when we triggered maven it checked the pom.xml and it saw that we added a new dependency. So it will go to the internet to download that dependency. And if that dependency or library is found, then it will download that code and that code we will see in the external libraries. So earlier it was only JDK 19, but now we see this org.apache.commons, commons lang, which is the artifact and the version. So we got the dependency in our project and we can simply check the dependency so we can see what files are there, what is the content of this library. Now, if we want to use some class, some functionality from this library, we can use it as it was written and defined in the same project. So if we use string utils, this is a class that is defined in the library that we just added. You can see the package name is org.apache.commons.lang3. So this is coming from the commons lang and I can use any method. Let's say uh, we use capitalize. If we give it a value and print this. And if I run the program, let's see what this capitalize will do. So it capitalized the first word. So you see, we are already using the functionality from commons lang3. We don't have to implement this functionality. We can simply use the library. And that's how we add a new dependency in a Maven project. We simply add the dependency tag and the Maven will download that dependency from the internet and it will import that dependency in the project. And then we can use the functionality, whatever functionality is defined there, we can use that functionality as if it was defined in the same project. So you see how Maven simplifies the whole thing. This is going to be very useful because in the upcoming videos, we will work with different frameworks, new frameworks. And for that, we will use Maven to import the dependencies to download the libraries. Now, one important thing, if you noticed, we did not download Apache Maven. We did not configure that. Then how is it working? Well, we have two choices. We can download the Apache Maven and install it on the machine. Then we can use it from the command line. Or we can simply use the Maven that is coming that is shipped with IntelliJ. So IntelliJ or IDE has its own setup for the Maven that we are using. So that's why we are creating the project from IntelliJ and using the internal Maven configuration. But we can also download the Apache Maven and keep both the configuration. It's up to us. In the long run, we should download and install Apache Maven on the local machine because the IDE's Maven setup will not be sufficient. But that is a simple task. You can simply follow the documentation of, of the Apache Maven or Gradle and you can follow the installation guide to install the Maven or Gradle on your system. So in this video, we briefly talked about uh, dependency management then we saw how to work with maven how to add dependencies which is the meat of dependency management tool we need a dependency management tool like maven or gradle to work with dependencies all right that's pretty much it from my side as always if you have any question or point please leave them below thanks for watching